All right. So, what's up, George? How you been? Good, good. Just uh, doing the day to day stuff as usual. How are you? How you been? Yeah, I've been pretty good. You know, it's uh, it's the middle of July. Some of the leaves are already changing color, which is kind of early, because you'd think that would happen around September when the fall comes. But it's been pretty dry this uh, summer here in London. Wow, I found the opposite has been for here. It's been uh, raining a lot. The other day we actually had like felt like a tropical hurricane. Oh, and where are you right now? Right now, I am in. You know, Aaron. I don't, but I I I believe you're close to Toronto somewhere. An hour north, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if it is the GTA, but I say it's the GTA. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there was a there was a rainfall here in London a while ago, maybe a week ago, maybe less than a week, but it was just intense rain for twenty minutes and then it went away. Hmm. <laughs> That's got to be good for all the the farm fields and stuff, but not good for like everything. Yeah, I bet. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm in the suburbs, so you know it doesn't really matter. You just chill inside. Sometimes the power goes out, but it's it doesn't wow. stay off too long. Um, but yeah, I mean I've been pretty good, just chilling at home, uh, still looking for for work and otherwise I got a blog I'm writing I'm doing this now putting up videos on YouTube so keep it's keeping me busy nice man nice so what is your day-to-day -day? my day-to-day -day, um, I've been helping a friend build a deck so he uh, has been telling me an address I wake up at I try to wake up for six o'clock. Sometimes I'll give myself some leeway and I'll press snooze twice and then get a bit more sleep. And then kind of either choose between sleep or food. So then I will make that decision, get up and go to work, help him with the deck, finish that, come back home and talk to family and then go to bed every Sunday. I've been trying to do like a big meal. So then I have something ready for at least Monday to Friday. And that's pretty much what I've been doing for quite some time now. Yeah. So, yeah, I have a deck here. It's pretty old. The woods uh, looks like it's going black. It's kind of splitting. I don't know anything about building a deck. So, you know, what goes into building a deck? The first thing is, I'm not sure the specific name, but it's the structure. So you have to dig out a hole, sorry, multiple holes, depending on the size of the deck. Put a, I would recommend a six by six. You can put four by four posts in the hole with concrete so it stays secure. They'll get at least four feet. Then from there, you put a board on each side or just on one side and against the house. And then you lay your flooring joists. From there, you put the deck boards and uh, adjust the deck to the specifications of what uh, each person would like. Oh, uh, so does all that apply if you're just replacing an existing deck? If you're replacing it, yeah, all that applies. You'd have to take out everything and then replace it sometimes there could be the concrete that's there that like the one i just did there was concrete with no post in it and then they had suggested that we use that we didn't end up using it because we wanted to secure the posts inside the concrete but yeah pretty much same step same step okay, yeah that's yeah that's pretty cool i'll i'll have to dig a bit deeper into it um i don't know it's not really my my house so you know all i can do is suggest what to do here uh i'm with living with my parents for the time being until i get some work so yeah that's going on and um so are you 
working these days or were you, uh, you know, laid off or affected by the pandemic at all? Yeah, big, uh, big uh, affected by the pandemic. Like I got laid off and then, yeah, it was sort of a weird scenario. I got laid off and then the guy was just like really strange with me. He like said that he loved the way I worked and then he was like upset at me. And then the main thing that kind of told that made me realize and let me tell myself that I shouldn't work with him was when he like brought me to the basement of a house we were building and then like screamed at me so much that like the, the houses there must have been like just under 50 houses. Mm -hmm. So a lot of houses around it was like a suburb that was being built. So I was in the basement and then he yelled like just for, for nothing really, just to have his voice heard, nothing I was doing wrong. And the whole site went quiet. You couldn't hear a tool. You couldn't hear one person mm -hmm. talk on the site. And like, I just, I was like, I need this job. Like uh, all this shit is, it just was starting COVID. So I said, I, I need this job. I can't really lose this. And yeah, it just really laid it down on me and made me feel horrible. And then I realized that that was the day of like a health and safety meeting. And then mm -hmm. after yelling, he had brought me upstairs. And then there was like 50 plus people, like closer to 100 all around. And then like he had just finished screaming at me. I was in a sense of like still trying to process what was happening. And then I came upstairs and, uh, yeah, it was just very awkward. The guy was talking about safety and this and that and everything. And I was just like, still trying to process what had happened from like, what, like what had happened. So I tried to continue with this guy and he was very on and off like that with things. I, I couldn't understand why it was happening. And then I just, uh, kind of told myself I shouldn't stay with this guy for too long. And then after I said that to myself and not spoke it out loud, he was like, oh, I forgot to mention that when he brought me to the basement, we had already agreed on $35 an hour. And then while I was down there, he said, like, the most I can pay you is 32. You're mm -hmm. not worth five, everything. And I said, like, very respectfully, we agreed upon 35. And then he's like, well, you can take the 35 right now and fuck off or you can get 32. So then that, that really made me think like, wow, I, I need this. And if someone's going to be like that, I shouldn't more than anything. I thought if someone's going to be like that. I shouldn't stick with them too long. And yeah. So then uh, after the safety meeting and everything, I was really thinking, yeah, I'm not going to stay here too long. And then, Soon after, he said, like, yeah, you, you're not needed here. We can't use you or anything. So I said, okay, no problem. W walked around to every other person on site. Uh, who has work? How can I work? Multiple people I got calls back from. One guy that day said he needed me and then just paid me cash for the day and was just very nice because he thought I needed work. Uh, it was nice. And also getting the calls back was even nicer from the people. But then uh, that guy had called me back or texted me back like way after when uh, I didn't have a job because he fired me and said it was because of COVID. But who, like, I don't really think that it was because of COVID. Mm. And um, yeah, he said like, oh, we really need you and everything. Like talking about low staff, people don't want to come in, COVID, everything. And then I just explained to him everything that I just said to you, how... You brought me to the basement, you screamed at me, you promised me 35 and then lied to me at that moment and then brought me up to the safety meeting after there was not a peep on the site and like you kind of scared me and probably scared others. So no, I'm not going to be returning back to work with you. And then he was like, okay, thank you. And then since then, yeah, I've just been helping this guy build decks. It was like a really weird thing to happen before COVID too for me. Yeah, man, that's, uh, 
that's intense. Uh, so, um, so this was back when the whole, uh, COVID thing was starting. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's a lot to unpack there in that scenario. So, I mean, it sounds like there was no reason this guy was, um, uh, yelling at you nothing that is seems obvious to me um seems pretty unfair to uh you know berate you and then uh and then you know go to a health and safety meeting pretend like nothing happened and then change your agreed upon uh, i guess contract price or you know hourly wage mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and then let you go or i mean i guess you decided not to continue working for him is that right yeah the thing that i kind of told myself that i helped me just because i thought like when someone someone does something like that you start thinking too much about like i started thinking too much into myself or how i did and maybe i did this wrong and, I just had to realize right. that his son was working with us at the time and he wasn't okay. really very disciplinary with his son. So okay. he was able to like teach his son through me as he wanted to a uh, you know, method of like new carpentry. He would make sure his son being like direct five, 10 feet where he could hear what's happening away from me and then teach me. So if he's doing that for positive things, mm -hmm. I would just do that for negative things too. But it took me a while to realize that because I was like very like mixed emotions in myself, but feeling bad. Yeah. I mean, man, that's, that's crazy. I mean, like it's like I said, it's a lot to unpack and I don't really know what to say, but I mean, definitely it sounds, um, intense unfair and just a bad uh uh employer basically is what it sounds like so um so yeah i mean it's it's great that you decided not to continue working um for him um but but it also sucks that um you, you're you're not employed now because of the the pandemic. And I, I take it that was your only job at that point. And now it's been tougher to find more work aside from helping your friend uh, build the deck. Um, is that a paid uh, job or is it just you're helping a friend? It's paid, yeah, but it's oh, okay. nowhere, nowhere in the range of the, the 35 an hour like I was making before. And I was okay. making around that range as well. It's just, more of like a, a prospect uh, i don't know if that's the right word but more of hmm. you like, gotta work right so you gotta it's something exactly exactly yeah and so is that like um what's the impact are you getting the the serb or the cesb from the government have you applied for that to get some money from the government yeah, I applied for that because without that, yeah, I wouldn't be able to, to drive anywhere or mm. pay any bills, do anything really. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm in the I'm in a similar situation. I mean, I wasn't employed beforehand. I finished my uh, certificate at Fanshawe College in December. I've been looking for work since January, and uh, luckily the student. The CESB, which is for students, uh, I can qualify for that. So I'm getting some income, which is awesome, um, but I'm still looking for work. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. So you were immediately and critically impacted by this whole coronavirus thing. Um, yeah. So like, is that um, like how how are you? managing are you by yourself now or are you staying with family 
I'm staying with my parents, so okay. that that does help. They they do help me with like room and board, which mm -hmm. is very important. But yeah, with uh, without that Serb, I I might not be able to to go to help but with like I wouldn't be able to kind of move around or buy any food for home or anything. I would just kind of be sitting at home just sitting at home yeah yeah it's tough to find work i mean i i was interviewing until the end of march basically but since then it's been uh, basically nothing um even if you want to work people aren't really hiring and at least for me when i apply to engineering jobs most of the applications i see now ask for five years or more and they're listed as entry level, which is confusing in itself. Um, and I do have almost five years, but I have a cumulative five years, whereas they're looking for like five years specifically with programming or stuff like that. So how, how, does, it, how does the job, how do you get jobs? Is, is it just through word of mouth? You talk to people on the site or like how do you, how would you, end up getting contracts or jobs before the pandemic before the pandemic and hopefully after i well i and present i'm with the <laughs> with the Laguna, so they're a union and it's a okay. union so they they help with that so i would be one of the people since i don't have a company yet nothing mm -hmm. small big i have to walk in sit in a room look at a screen and just keep calling numbers over and over till one of the numbers you find a person that hasn't already been called by another person like me okay. in the room and after calling however many numbers you might find one or two people and then you go well you go to the first i do go to the first person that says they need work and then if you get another call back then during like a Saturday or a Sunday if you're off, you can see how they work and go back and forth. Not back and forth, sorry. Mm. So like, it's yeah. it's contract work or is it like you're trying to find, a, like is it per job or do you have like a, a term limit in the contract? How does that work? Uh, I don't really understand, but I know that at the moment I'm working hourly and that's how I was working, okay. but what I am. I'm working up to, yeah, I'd like to go into that same room and actually speak to someone and say, hey, could I get this amount of houses? I have this big of a team and we're able to do that many this summer. Is there some place within an hour, hour and a half of here that is building? And yeah. in the GTA, that's a good possibility. Okay, man, good luck. I mean, I guess we both need it because obviously we're not working right now. I mean, you are, but you're looking for more work. Yeah. 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 I mean, uh, have you had any free time to do, you know, just to chill out? I mean, you can't be worrying all day. It's not good for you. Um, not much free time, but the little free time I've had, I made a nice garden in the back since my parents have some property. I have peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, beets, potatoes, carrots, well, lots of peppers, lots and lots of peppers, like yeah. so many. And that's then awesome. some green. Yeah. That's What's like the... my... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, that's, uh, yeah. Um, what's, uh, so they're all growing. Like what's the season now? Like what would you be eating right now from your garden? Peppers are going. Peppers are growing good. Tomatoes, not yet. Uh, beets. Beets have got huge. I actually had to cover up the beets again so they could like double, triple in size. Okay. And lots of like being uh, lots of greens. Lots of greens. I think it's called la boda in Greek. Mm. And I'll just go around and just pick it and eat it. It's delicious. <laughs> Wait, that's what beets are called, or you're talking about something else? Something else. Uh, no, um, it's a 
I don't know what it is. It's just like a green, like a, a lettuce, but it's a lot hardier. Oh, okay. Well, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, I love uh, vegetables straight from the garden. I mean, back in uh, when I used to stay in Perth, we were roommates there. Um, maybe it was after you you had left Perth. I used to go to the you know the Saturday morning farmers. Uh, market there in town and you could get fresh uh, produce honey that kind of stuff it was really good uh, wow. I, would, I think I used to get I actually don't remember what I used to get but it could have been beets maybe some cauliflower definitely baby tomatoes like the small ones they were really good that's nice <laughs> wow so so what's keeping you busy then um, is it that you're obviously working a bit and then uh, then you just, you, you come home, you probably, you have other stuff to do? Uh, yeah, like the, the garden keeps me busy and I go to my girlfriend in Toronto. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, back when uh, we were roommates in Perth, uh, you know, we used to we used to meditate a lot. Do you practice any kind of meditation these days? Um, not specific meditation, but I've been getting more into prayer. Like, not only just praying for something, and just which is helpful enough as it is, putting the thought and the intention out into the universe, but also making an action to accompany that prayer. Mm. So uh, would you say that's kind of like a way to visualize what you want to achieve? Is that kind of what you're doing? Like, Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool because, um, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of do that. I don't really uh, like think of events. But usually, whenever I decide, like, okay, tomorrow I'm going to go for a run, uh, I might have, like, an image of me running, something like that. Is it, is it like that, or you're, you're, like, sitting down and being like, all right, this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to accomplish, this is how I'm going to do it, stuff like that? A bit of both. A bit of both, for sure. Okay, okay. That's cool. So is there anything uh, you're working on now like trying to bring into reality whether it's soon or you know years down the road anything you want to share right now i'm really focused on uh, a truck first which will accompany oh, okay. a, a business which those contracts that mm -hmm. i'm trying to get whether it's decks or whether it's through the union building actual homes and as soon as that's a possibility. I think a bank is much more inclined to give me a loan for a mortgage and then a house soon after where me and my girlfriend can move into. Mm, okay. Damn. Yeah, you, you've got a um, path, I guess. You know, you know where you're trying to get to. So that's, it's always good. It, it keeps you going in that direction. Yeah. Oh, breaking up. Oh, I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? You just went back and forth. I didn't hear too much. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can hear you fine. Your video looks good. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just doing this uh, podcast thing just for fun, just to see what it's like, throw it up on YouTube. Um, I've been so excited all day. <laughs> really? That, that's... For a while, for a while, yeah. Yeah, we haven't talked for, for a long time. I mean, when was the last time we spoke? Must have been over text. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't over the phone. It must have been over text. And then the last time we met up was almost, what is it, almost a year? 
Oh, right. You, you drove into London. We uh, met at a Williams. I think we had coffee or lunch or something. Uh, that, that was, I think that was in August. That was uh, almost a year ago. Yeah, that was quite some time. Do the chicken wings need to be flipped? Oh, yeah, that was fine. It just went <laughs> off. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> at work, they kept, like, I was, like, at the end of the day, really moving everything to the truck to get going. And like, George, you really want to get out of here, don't you? And I was like, I got I to gotta go. I got to pod. I got to be on a podcast. <laughs> Well, that's great. That makes me feel great that you're excited to talk. I mean, I, I like talking to you too. It's fun. Um, you're a good friend. Um, I, I think I still have the video of you uh, chopping a watermelon in half. Do you remember that? <laughs> no, I remember uh, I got a coconut because a few people hadn't uh, had like a raw coconut. We opened it with a machete. I don't remember the watermelon. <laughs> that's... No, yeah, this was, uh, uh, when was it? It was probably around when we met a couple of summers ago. All right, the video shows you, you know, in shorts, no shirt on with long hair tied in a bun. And you're just like, hey, okay, just watch me. I'm going to chop this <laughs> watermelon in half. And you just like slice it. It doesn't go all the way through, but it's enough to just kind of take it apart. Nice. You have to send me that. If you still... Yeah, yeah, sure. Let me, let me write that down so I remember. Thank you. Watermelon video. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, but those, those are good times, man. I mean, oh, we had a lot of like deep talks and strange conversations. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I remember one time, I think I, I think I ate too much pasta or something. And we were just jumping around listening to rap music in the in kitchen number one, the bigger one. Okay. And then someone walked by, maybe it was jail or something, and she was like, What is going on here? Why are you guys jumping around? <laughs> yeah, I could uh not see her just coming jumping in partaking. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, um, so what else is going on? I mean, I'm still new to this, so I don't really know how to continue a conversation. Yeah, um, not, I don't know, not too much else is new with me. I've been visiting my girlfriend a lot in Toronto. I haven't really had a uh, long-term relationship. Mm. It's really nice, so it's, uh, it's a good thing. It's a really nice thing to to have in life, I find it pretty different that people choose. I don't know if people choose or it happens, but uh, that yeah, people are alone for a long time. Mm. I uh, yeah, I really had to like put myself out there. I. Well, no, not like I, I was putting myself out there for a while. Sorry. And I remember. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Let me try online dating. Let me see what oh, this yeah. is. About. And yeah, lots of experience. Not lots of experience. Lots of experience. Not even lots. A few experiences with it. Okay. And all different. And yeah, it was very different when uh, Selena is her name. Me and Selena met, and and this is a different Selena than from Perth, our roommate. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. I, I was pretty <laughs> sure, but I was just checking. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I would, you would have known. I would have said something. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good, man. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I can't really say much. I haven't really had a girlfriend. Um, I had a girlfriend for like three days in high school, but that doesn't really count. It was, uh, it was like one of those things, Hey, you want to be my girlfriend? I was like, yeah. And then later it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't really think this is uh, going to work. 
I didn't really know what I was doing. So, um, but, but yeah, it's pretty cool, man. I'm just chilling, not looking right now, but you know, whatever happens, happens. It's, it's a good thing if you want to go for it. I, I really recommend putting in the extra hours, effort, whatever you want to call it, into, into yeah, trying for it. It's yeah, dram dramas dramatically improved my life. And I, uh, I hope I'm dramatically improving her life. Yeah, man. I mean, that sounds awesome. I don't know what else to say, but um, if you got a good thing going, keep it going. Um, you, it sounds like you already know that you got to put in work. So, I mean, you know, that's a good sign, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah um, so, what have you been listening to these days, like music wise? Uh, recently, Pop Smoke. And oh yeah. Before that, all your play, my brother's playlists, and then your playlists, and then at this, I don't know if I heard the same time that he died that he had an album coming out, or if it was first he had an album coming out, then he died. But I saw some things on Instagram, and yeah. I heard one of his songs and I liked it. So I thought I don't really listen to albums too. Oh no, what am I saying? First, I said, you know what? I'm gonna listen to a full album through. And I listened to Nav's album through like multiple times. I had it on repeat for quite some time. And then after that, all that happened with Bob Smoke and I listened to it and then I, yeah kept listening to the album yeah that's that's cool i mean i i haven't really heard pop smoke or nav i mean i've heard of nav i saw i've seen a video of him like an interview but yeah i know pop smoke i think he died recently but i guess he has a pos posthumous album out so that means you know after you die you get an album i hope the the proceeds like automatically go to his parents or his family if he has a family children wife or i don't know how that works really if he has kids and he's married or not married or mm. if, if his uh, will or whatever it is i know that if you don't have a will it should go right to your parents i know that really uh okay i mean i, I was i thought like if you don't have a will, it goes to your estate, which is yeah, like, I don't really know how to describe it, but basically if you don't give your property uh, and assets to someone, I think like the, the government hires someone to handle how to split up your estate to people. I mean, I really know nothing about how they split it up, but yeah, yeah. I guess it'll go to his estate. Yeah, hopefully there is uh, yeah, lots of family in that estate that will uh, have some money. It's never going to be the same as losing him, but yeah. Yeah, the Nav album. Pop Smoke's good too, but uh, Nav album is very good too. Yeah, I listened to it on repeat. I found uh, like a lot of the songs I could like connect with. And I actually understood it more than a lot of the rap I listened to. Nav's album hit me in a different way. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard it. Um, I think it's called Changes. Or maybe that's a song on the album. Anyway, a friend of mine told me to listen to it, but I haven't gotten around to it. But I'll, I'll take a listen. Uh, yeah, I mean... I don't know, I kind of got off listening to music for a bit. I just got into it for like a month and then I haven't been back on it for a couple of weeks. I've just been listening to a lot of podcasts nowadays. But the last full album I listened to was the new uh, Run the Jewels album, Run the Jewels 4. Um, 
I, I, man, I remember watching an interview where Killer Mike describes the album. If, I hope I can remember it correctly. Um, but I think he said, it's like drinking a cup of coffee and then getting punched in the face, something ridiculous like that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I guess it just means it's like intense and it is pretty intense. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I've listened to it a couple of times and I decided I'm going to practice writing. So uh, I'm going to write a, a song review for each of the 11 songs on the album. I have no idea how to write a song review. So I'm just kind of winging it. I've done one song review so far on my blog, but yeah, hopefully I can get into the other ones. Um, yeah. Nice. Okay. was uh run the jewels was that the did you have one of those on your playlist uh, i don't think so um i i have no idea i'd have to take a look but i'm gonna say no because i because this is their fourth album so it's a group do you, you know about that no oh okay so run the jewels is a a duo made of uh, a rapper named Killer Mike and then a rapper and producer named LP. Uh, so they're a group. They've released four albums since 2012 or 13, I think. And uh, yeah, all their albums, as far as I know, are like hyped up. I, I haven't listened to the first three. Um, well, I mean, I've listened to some songs, but I just got into it for the fourth album, which just came out. I think last month yeah so um i know of killer mike oh you do okay he's good i heard a few of his songs but my favorite one was uh ronald reagan i remember hearing hmm. it was good very good yeah yeah that was, was from yeah go ahead so yeah, it was the first song that I heard and I was like, wow, this is able to like be on, I heard on YouTube. I was like, wow, this is able to be on YouTube. This is amazing. Like there's so much information in three minutes. Yeah. I mean, that, that song must be from an earlier album. Uh, but yeah, it's like some of the songs are intense on there. Uh, there's a song called Walking in the Snow which has a verse from Killer Mike. And it's specifically about uh, like people getting choked out and saying, I can't breathe. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's referring to like police brutality. Uh, I don't remember the lyrics offhand, but that's, that's the vibe I kind of got. But yeah, it was, a, it was an intense song. Run the jewels. All right. That yeah. is, is locked in here. Is it is there is there a fly or a mosquito or what is it? I saw it on the screen. There was a fly, big one. Let me Man. let me uh, let me try to find it here. The fly swatters. Let me try to see if it's gonna stop. Let me see if it's gonna land. On this episode of <laughs> vlogging with George, I try to find a fly and hit it without a fly swatter. Let's without explore. Fly. Wow. Oh, it's a quick one. <laughs> <laughs> oh did you get it i got it but i don't know where it is now oh man <laughs> it's definitely it oh so there it is <laughs> you got it okay. Just go oh man yeah that's uh and and that is the end of Fly swatting with George. <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. Mike, he, uh, he's amazing. I didn't really have time because I was on and off with the decks and I've been trying to really follow the path that I've been putting my life on now to better myself and also my girlfriend, hopefully a future family. But yeah, I heard how he was speaking, I believe in the States, 
on uh, BLM. And just hearing that one song, I knew that this guy had a lot of wisdom and that what he had to say was going to have like a big impact. So now that you also are recommending him, I, I really should hear at least from the jewels and maybe the, uh, the speech and the, the talking that he did on uh, BLM. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really know too much. I mean, I'm not really involved in American politics, but he's definitely well-spoken. Like he's, uh, he paints a picture very clearly. And, you know, I've seen videos of what's going on with the protests and um, fights between the police and protesters. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy what's, what's going on um, with the Black Lives Matter movement. I mean, there was a, a, a protest organized here in London last month or this month, some time ago. Um, but yeah, it was, it's also during the pandemic, which is weird because like... People sort of forgot about the pandemic and all came together, I noticed. Well, which, I mean, it's, it's strange because on the, on the one hand, you have a pandemic. So the recommendation is to distance socially. And you know, that, that I mean, it makes sense if you, like, uh, if you talk too close or, you know, you exchange spit or something, you might transmit the virus. So you wanna avoid getting too close. Um, you can wear masks to kind of mitigate that and reduce the likelihood of getting any transmission. But, but you know, uh, as, you know, people want to protest, they're going to protest. So, and you, you can't really, I mean, I haven't seen a protest that where people were like spaced out. It's always in a large group mm -hmm. and you're usually like, not usually, but you know, sometimes you're walking through streets, at least in this case in London, there was a, a, a route planned. I saw the day before the protest. Um, yeah. So like you know public health threat uh social i don't know what what to call the the protest i guess a social movement uh i don't know i don't think that's the correct word but anyway you know those two things together it's like yeah i know we're gonna get sick or we might get sick but this is important enough for us to go out and say something about it yeah yeah I, that was perfect and I, I need not to say anything right now oh, okay yeah yeah anyway i mean i didn't attend because uh like because of that like the, the the pandemic i was afraid of um getting sick or getting my family sick you know my parents are older so you know i, I don't want to get get them sick um you never want to get people sick but if someone's vulnerable you know you especially don't want to get them sick yeah yeah i feel like if i didn't go as well but if i were to have gone and then someone had got sick i would have been the, the cause because i just had been with so many people mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy what a weird time. Yeah, this year has been like uh, one for the books and it's called <laughs> 2020. <laughs> yeah, you know, people who have great vision, have 2020 vision, but the vision for 2020 definitely wasn't this. No one saw this coming. <laughs> yeah. If you yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. But, you know, it's, it's, it seems like people are getting through it. Um, I, I see a lot of people wearing masks when I go to the grocery store or the pharmacy, even before it was mandatory here in London. It's been mandatory since Saturday in public indoor places. Um, but even before yeah. then, people seemed pretty, uh, 
like I haven't come across someone who was like I didn't come across some kind of situation that was like terrible you know it's like people still respect each other it seems but you know I don't really I basically go to the grocery store and the pharmacy um and and drive through so yeah this is just from what I've seen yeah same here the only experience I could say that was different was going into a Walmart and then I saw I think eight is an exaggeration but multiple people walk in without a mask mm. and I got in mine I'm walking in and then the lady's like stop what you're doing and I was like I'm scared she's like you need to wear a mask and I was like I, I, I don't know if I remember if it was mandatory or not at the time probably but I was like because my right away reaction was like, I just saw a bunch of people walk in without masks. And right. She's like, oh, sorry, they're mandatory. And then I was like, okay, that's that's on me. That's not on anyone else because I don't have a mask and she didn't see the other people. She wasn't there at that exact moment. But I was like, oh, so many people just walked in without a mask. Man, you know what's the worst? Uh, I had a friend who was on the road and had to use the washroom at, a, at an en route but they refused entry because there was no mask. So you had to hold it until you got to your destination. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've had, that's, I think uh, the worst part, even when like now in the area of Tim Hortons are open. So you're able to stop and go to the washroom. I live out in the country ish anyway, so I'm not afraid to pull over to the side and piss on the side of the road. (laughs) Okay. Sometimes when I, when I don't want to, if there's a bunch of cars, or if I just want to use a washroom and actually like wash my hands or whatever it is, actually like go number two, then yeah, uh, you gotta gotta have a washroom somewhere because it's uh, it's not good when someone sees you run into the car and run into the forest. They might like, what is this guy doing? And then you got toilet paper and napkins in your hand. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not. Uh, you know, they're like, what the heck is what's happening? And I'm always afraid someone's going to stop and then be like, hey, what are you doing? And I'm like, the washrooms are closed right now. Where the hell do I go? My trip from work and back is an hour and a half each way. I'm just, I'm just going to fertilize this farm for a second. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things that freaks me out the most. It's like, what if I have to use the washroom and I can't? Like that's, that's, that's a crazy situation to be in. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, but like, I, yeah, I've gone to Walmart too. That's um, not everyone wears a mask, but I don't think they're enforcing it or they weren't the last time I was there. Um, I think at the beginning, like back in March and April, Walmart started having these lines and bouncers so I just avoided going to Walmart because I didn't want to wait. So I would just go to a food basics, which didn't have a line at all. But nowadays they don't have lines. So I feel pretty good going to Walmart and uh, not waiting, getting in there and getting what you need and then getting out. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, hopefully, um, I mean, things are starting to open up again. Are you still in stage two? Like, are you in that area where you're still in stage two? Uh, I think so. We're allowed 50 people now. I don't know if that's stage three. Oh, like are gyms open in your area or close by? They should be. I think so. You know what? After we're done here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my gym, see if they are open. Because I've called a few times and they haven't been. I'm going to see what they're what they're doing yeah yeah because uh, uh london's in stage three and toronto area i think windsor is still in stage two but the last headline i read on uh, online was that they're planning to get into stage three soon so you know you might be able to go to the gym again that'd be good yeah that'd be good like i get a lot of physical activity at work but i can definitely do some more working out. I had a goal for a while to get to 220, and I want to get to 220, and then from there, 
see how I feel, see how like how hard or how easy stuff is at work, see how my body reacts to all that extra weight in that small amount of time. I've been eating more to gain that too. And then if I can get to 240. So the sooner the better the gym's open, that would be very helpful. So what weight are you at now? Now I'm fluctuating around 200, like I go to 195 to like almost 200. And I've been, I was at like 190 to 195 before. Now I'm getting from 195 to like 199.6 or whatever it is. And then I'm trying to get to that 200 to 205 range. So just to put it into context, uh, what, how much do you think you weighed back in August? Like when we last met at Williams? Probably 160 to 70. Oh, maybe. damn. Oh, my God. That's, so you put on like 20 or 30 pounds since then? That's Probably not 160. Maybe like one. I was at 170 to 174 for like a while. I remember the scale was at that. So probably 170. But yeah, 170 to 200, just 30 pounds, yeah. And so uh, what, uh, is there a reason you're trying to put on weight? Like, what do you hope to use that, that strength for? Like, are you, I mean, I mean, I'm guessing it's going to help out with your job because it's, yeah. it's physical labor. I mean, <laughs> I can only imagine working all day doing physical labor because yeah. I haven't done that. So uh, I yeah, guess that's what. Definitely for work. There's lots of lumber that needs to be lifted, but also. For my girlfriend too, I would like to just be in better shape, more fit and strong, and be happy if uh, I'm able to like, be strong for her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you gotta uh, like the more threatening you look, the less likely people are gonna mess with you. Yeah, exactly. Like if uh, someone looks at her, and then I'm two twenty or two forty. Then I just look at them and then it's all good. You know, they won't have to. <laughs> hey, babe, is, is, is everything okay? Death stare. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to put on some weight too. I mean, not specifically weight, but I'm trying to uh, get a bit stronger. Um, like even back in Perth, I had messed up my neck a little bit. And then like I pulled a, a calf later on. So my posture is kind of messed up. I mean, it's not like so terrible that it's, it's not so terrible, but it's, it's like something hurts every day. So I'm, I'm working on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I started uh, drinking a whey isolate mixture with water. So I do that like once a day. So that's like 30 grams of protein for me. So what's your, what's your, what's your diet? And like, do you have any recommendations how to get stronger or put on weight? That Sunday meal plan, you could call it, like, uh, that really helps. I have, my parents have a big dish that probably fits 15 bell, red bell peppers. And then I fill up the red bell peppers with ground beef. I've been doing rice, but I've been trying to cut out rice. And I've been putting onions instead, more vegetables. And... What else have I been putting in? Put a lot of spices and then mainly just to have like three, four stuffed peppers for lunch and then to have them just at an amount where it's like almost forcing myself to like eat once I'm full mm. and that's really helping me put on the extra weight. And that's, that's next level because like, yeah, that, my uh, one of the challenges I have is like for if I don't need to eat, I don't want to eat. So yeah, I gotta practice just eating more because that's I mean that's either you put on weight by eating more than you need, or you do less, you work less, you work your body less. Yeah. So yeah, so that's a, yeah, that's crazy. Um, uh, do you so it must be tough because you know you were working doing manual labor 
pretty regularly. All of a sudden it stops. You're doing a bit with the building the deck. But like, do you have like physical energy that's just like, like it's hard to get out? Like, do you have any oh, that kind of thing? Constant, constant. I usually play basketball. My parents have put a, still have a basketball in the front uh, that they put on the driveway. So that'll really help me whenever I need to go release some energy. I can just play basketball just constantly until I almost drop to the floor, which okay. is, yeah, it's helpful. And that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, uh, I've been running a lot. So uh, I saw a physiotherapist in January until March before their office closed down. Uh, so I went to get treatment for my pulled calf. So it's not a serious injury, like nothing's torn as far as I can tell, but it's, I think it's some kind of strain or something, but it's just really annoying because, you know, you walk around, you can feel there's a difference and it hurts. Um, but yeah, to treat that, I have like some physio exercises and then I run two or three times a week, maybe like 10 to 15 kilometers every week. Um, yeah, but my, I try to keep up a daily routine of at least an hour workout. Um, definitely not uh, until I, I drop to the floor. I would love to do that, but I find like the next day I'm super stiff and it, everything hurts and I'm kind of cranky. Oh, that's the best, actually. That's <laughs> Why? You got to get to that point. That's when I've heard your muscles start to, like, kind of rip and reheal. Right. I don't right. know if it's, but I assume it's true. We learned it in school that you work out so hard that your muscles like start to. Well, the way I picture it, and the way I think it was pictured in the book, was that they like start to separate mm. because they've been worked out so hard, and then new muscles. So, say this is still here. New muscles come from underneath, and then fill those gaps yeah. of where the muscles been ripped and then like you like that pain of the next day being stiff and not being able to move is actually just a feeling of your muscles repairing but yeah it does feel shitty it feels like i'm not going to be able to like when i'm lifting up like one two by four and i move the wrong way i'm like oh wow yeah uh, muscle somewhere yeah that worked yeah i mean yeah i've heard that too like uh back in high school um I used to do like the football team had uh, workouts they would do after the grade nine football season. So I did that for a few months because I was planning on uh, joining the football team in grade 10. But I mean, in the end I didn't join the team because after a week of tryouts, the coach said, uh, you know, you can be on the team because you've worked so hard to me and some other students, uh, but you know, you're not going to play. So I was just like, ah, uh, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to be on the team. Um, but anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, yeah, I've heard that too, where you, know, you have to tear your muscles to repair it. And, uh, but I'm just trying to find a balance between doing that and also, you know, creating your own kind of chill vibe. Cause like when you hurt or when you're in pain, it's personally, it's hard to take things easy and I'm not expecting to do that and be able to chill, you know, with the same kind of mood, but you know, it's a transition. So I'm just trying to figure out how to build strength uh, and flexibility because usually building muscle in my experience comes with less flexibility. Like if you repeatedly try to build muscle, you know what I mean? Yes. So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm just looking at the long game, but, but yeah, it's great advice. I think, I think I'll, I will continue to do that, you know, at least have like a, at least maybe aim for once a week, like a really intense drop to the floor workout. I think that's a good start. Do it at least once a week, um, figure out how to, how to do it, how to recover, keep it up for a few months and then maybe move, move into more intense workouts to kind of train your body how to recover. Um, and like the way the way isolate uh, shake really does help i used to be exhausted after doing workouts but now i'm not tired if i have a, a glass of that um but yeah i do that and every couple of weeks i'm, I'm trying to run a, a 10k uh, it's pretty hard for me because my yeah. legs tighten up so the one 10k i did run recently took me an hour and 33 minutes 
which is a long time. But that day it was just like, all right, I'm just gonna keep going. So yeah, that's that's another way to kind of push yourself until you drop. Oh yeah, running I find it's very yeah, if you haven't ran in a while, which was me and my brother was going on runs, I joined him for one. I we did like nine point something. Yeah, that was a, it was a, from not running at all to just almost a 10k. It was it was very different, but yeah, there's an amazing feeling just continuously running. Yeah, I mean, do you run regularly? No, I haven't been running regularly. I would, I wouldn't mind running, but. Uh, my brother, I guess, was running more. So I said, okay, let me run with you. And then I haven't really seen him run any time. He's been working a lot. So yeah, if he was running, I would like to run, but uh, by myself, I guess I could, yeah. I just would have to push myself, yeah. I would like to, to run more, but yeah, I just need to get into the routine of uh, running by myself and pushing myself to run, yeah. Yeah, like the way I started, uh, and yeah. this is what my physiotherapist recommended. Uh, he said, uh, you know, do sets. So when you start, you know, run for three minutes, uh, walk for a minute, and do that like three times. Uh, and then take a, take a break, like do that one day, take a break the next day maybe a two day break. And then when you go back, do the same thing. And every week add another set. So the first week you do three sets of a three minute jog followed by a one minute walk. Then the next week you might do four sets. So week to week, you're increasing it by four minutes. So 12 minutes the first week, then 16 minutes, then 20 minutes. Um, so yeah, I just kind of did that and then played around with it. But usually what happens with me is, uh, I increase the load, but then I follow it with a decrease in load. Then I increase the load and then decrease the load. So it's like, if it was a graph, it's not going like this. It's like, kind of like wave, wavy, you know? Um, that works for me because, I don't know, every now and then, like, it feels good to stop, like slow down a bit. And, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know if you'd call it lazy, but it's like an intentional laziness, you know? Um, but yeah, that's, yeah. if you want to run, that's how I did it. Start with sets. Um, just so you get the hang of, you know, how it feels when you run. Cause uh, I don't know if, if you didn't run and you all of a sudden run nine K, like you said, that's, that's crazy. Like your body must've been, like, what is going on here? Are you still there? Oh, man. All right, well, uh, George is gone. All right, yeah, so, yeah, you, we just got cut off because, uh, uh, you know, there was a connection problem at your end. I don't remember what we were talking about when we got cut off. It was something about, you know, uh, working out until you drop yeah oh uh, yeah it's uh good to do that and I, I was saying something about like running i definitely need to start running if the gyms are aren't open i'm gonna start running when i was at the gym i started doing treadmills a bit oh yeah okay <clears throat> well that's good running out so much better yeah i mean i always run outside but uh, my sister told me she used to run in the, well, according to her a few years ago, when she used to run in the gym on treadmills, um, you know, she, she, she used to come with me for runs outside and she would say, man, running outside is so much harder. Yeah, definitely. Uh, different, different air, different vibe both sides. Sometimes, especially living where I live, I'll be running. And then the dogs will start barking at like the farm nearby. You hear like four go off. You know, like like the other time when I was running with my brother, they started to chase him, and I was like, whoa, whoa. "Oh my god!" Started like, screaming because I didn't know if they were gonna attack or what. 
but yeah definitely way different vibes yeah so like is your brother running on the roads like on the side of the road yeah on the side of the road just on the uh shoulder okay wow yeah i don't have experience running on the shoulder i'm always running on the sidewalk sometimes on trails but i imagine the shoulder is softer on your feet because it's not pavement so that must be nice to run on there yeah yeah definitely better than uh pavement but yeah trails would be trails would be nice softer dirt and uh yeah there's actually a trail near our place that i think i'm gonna start running mm. okay yeah i mean let me know how it goes because um yeah, I mean, I track my runs on this app called Strava. Um, yeah, so that's that's always there. So that's kind of cool to see progress over time. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, what, just, yeah, the progress, I guess? Nice. That is, that is good to see. Yeah, have you heard of it? I have not, no. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an app for your phone or smartwatch where uh, you can record runs or bike rides or other exercise exercises. Like I have a friend who does paddling and records that. What else? Just like a regular workout, like a gym workout will record your duration and your heart rate if you have the watch on. Um, so I think it's cool, but it, I don't know. I still, I still feel weird about it because like you're basically, you're putting up your, your run uh, route online. So if you're not careful, you know, people can figure out where you live. It's not that hard. Um, they do offer, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. they do offer like a privacy zone in the app where you can turn off, like let's say 200 meters or a kilometer around your locations that you choose. So, I mean, I use that, but I'm, I mean, I think I could figure out where, where someone stays just by looking at, their route history so i still use it but i'm still not like 100 percent on on that uh, i think it's great if you if you're going to use it like outside i mean like away from where you are but in this time during the pandemic it's like i mean you, you could still do it but anyway yeah it's it's, it's still a pretty cool app because you can see how your friends are you can create running clubs see how they're doing but the privacy side is kind of iffy, in my opinion. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, so if you are interested, uh, you know, I'll follow you. Uh, I have a running club with my buddy. I use that to compare how how we run, and I put a update uh, an Insta Instagram page that we have for that. So anyway, are you are you off Instagram now? No, I'm back on. I made a different account, deleted the old account because it was a bit of everything, a bit every, a bit everywhere, a bit of everything, a hey, bit of information that. Yeah. Your old account so was it, intense. Your posts were intense, like a few years yeah, ago. Like not everyone, in Perth days, they were intense. Yeah, not everyone wants to to see all that all the time, and especially starting a business and trying mm -hmm. to get. Lots of work often people uh can tell that that from like talking with you and becoming like friends and stuff and having relationships with people instead of me like posting it online for whoever to see and then I thought that was a better way yeah, it makes it tricky right when you wanna when you want to run a business and you have all this history online. I mean, I imagine it makes it tricky. I can't speak from experience. Um, yeah, I don't really mind about like the history online. For me, it was just that if it was a transition from like there to the business, then mm -hmm. I know people would be like, like, I love the pictures of like this deck and this, but like, what the hell? Like, what is this? <laughs> and then they'd, they'd go off and then I wouldn't even be like talking about business anymore. I wouldn't be able to like talk oh. about okay this needs to how do you want this how do you want this and i would get caught up in talking with them for so long like oh you think this and you think this and i'd be like yeah i do and this and this and they're like oh this is cool let me learn about this i think similar on this so 
let's share ideas and i i said that's not gonna it's not gonna work <laughs> in a business it can work in a business setting but not for the way i wanted to to work yeah you want the focus to be uh on your business and you don't want to take it away from personal posts you know for lack of a better word and then keep your uh you know keep your personal stuff between friends and family basically yeah that's a good way to put it yeah okay. very much so. that's good yeah yeah i mean yeah i don't know what i'm doing i mean i'm just kind of feels like i'm just kind of throwing darts uh, you know as far as social media goes but that's intentional like i'm putting up these videos of talks uh making other youtube videos putting up drawings and stuff but you know that's like after years of of not putting out too much personal stuff so for me it kind of feels like i i have to get it out somehow uh, especially now cuz i'm not really meeting up with friends and things like that so it's just a way to kind of uh, express my interests yeah it's like i don't know if you've had this feeling but it's like when you you have so much going on you have to put it out somehow otherwise it's it's just like too much to bear it's just you're always thinking about it but if you like write it down or uh, draw it out or write a poem get it out there and it's out of your mind and onto the screen or a piece of paper and you can revisit what you want but it doesn't occupy your space during the day you haven't had that uh no i can't say <laughs> okay. i have anyway that's that's just uh yeah. that's how it is with me um so uh hello yeah can you hear me now can you hear me hello hello you froze again okay how about now i'm good now you're good now okay i'm good now yeah you're good um so uh what are you are you watching any like tv shows these days or movies and stuff like that it's a good question i don't really have too much time for tv but i've been reading oh often. yeah yeah i read um the comp pen compendium of the emerald tablets okay what Very is that it's I don't know if people call it like sand scriptures or other people call it like the original 10 commandments or what it's really called but it's like a the best way to put it is it's a set of rules on how to like not like how to control your physical avatar in mm. this in this time and space like it's it's amazing there's there's a lot of uh old words you feel like you're reading either very old text or like a bible and you can see the similarities within a lot of the religions now and the emerald tablets and yeah it's very good i'm gonna i'm gonna read it many times over throughout my life but after i finish this book free the children i'm gonna go back and read that again oh i when you say you know how to how to control your physical avatar is that kind of like how to conduct yourself in life and how to treat yeah. people that kind of stuff yeah weird a weird way that i put it what i'm trying to say is like we have a lot of thoughts that cloud our mind from doing what we really want no sorry doing what we really need to be doing to have our wants being very positive for us in life and there are things that you can do uh, that will get rid of all that cloudiness that you can uh, you're able to be your best self sort of thing and mm. simple yeah simple things that yeah it, that's i don't know how else uh, like like i said I, i need to read it again and i wanted to read it soon because there's a lot of stuff that dive really deep into thoughts that 
okay, maybe I need to do this because it's better for me, but where do I even start? How do I start something that's in a totally different part of my mind that I don't really visit too much and think about? So what should I do to start activating that part of my mind so I'm able to better myself because I see that I don't use that part of my brain or, and I would like to, because it, it is good for me. I just don't know how to, to do that. So it's even that, like teaching little things like that throughout the book. Yeah. Yeah. That's sounds like a good, uh, good. I don't know. What's the word like self-improvement. Uh, mm -hmm. in my opinion is is beneficial if you're doing it intentionally which it sounds like that's what you're going for you're trying to figure out trying to figure out how how does my mind work how does it lead me to my decisions in life and my relationships with people and yeah that's a great uh, that's a great way to reflect and I've done those kinds of things and I find value in that. So yeah, I would love to talk more about that in the future, whenever. Uh, I mean, like you said, you're going to read it many times. So I'm sure you'll have, you'll have a lot of thoughts on that. So just let me know if you want to dig into one thing and we'll do that later on. Yeah, I will. I will. If, uh, yeah, if I, uh, yeah i will try to yeah. But, yeah very good book highly highly recommend it it's called the emerald tablets either compendium or compodium of the emerald tablets yeah compendium uh, i believe is a a word that means a collection of stuff that's what it is then okay okay yeah because <laughs> the only reason i know that word is because I know there's the there's a compendium. There are four compendiums of the Walking Dead. That's the only reason I know. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's like reading the Bible, man. Like the only way to put it, just like quickly, and for whoever watches this video, that uh, it isn't all confusing the way I just said it. It's like reading the Bible, but a better Bible that is uh, to everyone. You know, it's not just to one religion or one race of people it's something that anyone can uh, read something that they want from it that will benefit their life if that's what they choose to do with the information yeah you're, you're just comparing it to the bible because um well it sounds like like people can make use of this um compendium for their daily life without having to like it's not targeted specifically for specific religions or racist no. like basically what you said it's for anyone yeah. who wants to read it exactly. yeah. okay yeah that's awesome yeah i mean yeah i've been reading a lot too but mostly novels um there's this like sci-fi space opera show called the expanse which is based on books so i've been reading the books and then watching the show and oh, man i read this third book in three days it was like 500, it was 550 pages. That's it amazing. Was, yeah, I mean, usually I, At once. Yeah, it's, it's more for, I know I won't remember what I read a week or two from now, but I enjoyed the ride while I was reading it. It's like watching a movie for me. I watched the movie, I enjoy it. You ask me what happened in the movie, a few months from now, I don't remember, except I know how it ends. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's new. So it was fun reading it, but when, you, when you're so focused on reading one thing, everything else kind of falls away. You have tunnel vision. I got to read this. I got to find out what happens next. I got to finish this, and then bam, you're done. Yeah, you're right, right there. Yeah. That's why with this one, I, I said I was going to take it a bit slower because I ended up reading two books, like the compendium, another one. And then I got like sort of like a dictionary or glossary 
And then I just went through that whole thing, just scanned what I needed to and read. And then I thought that I need to take it a bit slower with the book. Yeah. 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 Especially if you're trying to retain information, uh, like reading consecutively quickly doesn't really help because it doesn't retain that information. Um, it's kind of like cramming for a test. You're trying to like put in a lot of stuff, but then if you're not using it every day or revisiting it, it doesn't stay in your head. That's, that's been my experience. Yeah. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, George, thanks for doing this. Um, it was good talking to you after almost a year, at least in video form. Hopefully this uh, pandemic, you know, slows down and things start opening up more and then we can hang out. I don't know how long it'll be. It might even be next year, depending on how things go, but you know. Yeah, uh, we can always try to make it work before then too. I know that in my area, stuff like you said starting to open up i think gta is phase two some northern gta is phase three and if you're already in phase two we can definitely make it work yeah yeah so yeah um uh, just let me know um we'll do this again if you want whenever and uh yeah have a good day enjoy you too man thank you for having me peace